So we were lucky enough um, when we stopped in Lund to bump into Bo here, who is um, a software engineer, and he has written a fantastic program. I want to ask you about your program, how you wrote it, how you got into it. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just start with, uh, when did you start writing it? Well, I got my first test lab a year and a half ago, uh, and uh, driving it home from, from Germany, actually imported it from, from Germany. I, I, you know, I started using the, navigator, the navigation system and the planning there, and uh, turned out to be less than what I had hoped for, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, actually, like the weekend after I got my car, I was going to drive to Denmark, okay. and back the same day. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't get my head around on how to plan that round trip tour to the middle of Denmark. So let me stop you there. What wasn't it doing for you that you wanted it to do? I think the biggest thing, the biggest you know, thing I wanted to solve was actually being able to plan ahead in, at your, you know, at home. Oh, okay. In your before, computer or before mobile you before I get into the car and, you know, I want to plan a trip from here to here and I'm not here and I'm not here. I can't really do that in my car because it will only plan from the current position. Right. So I think that was the biggest thing to try to solve, that I can plan ahead. And I think most EV owners want to do that. And so you saw the problem, yeah. and you, know, you went home, and then how long did it take you to figure out how to solve that problem? I, that's been a long trip. <laughs> I mean, I started in a small, it's, it's still based on Python, the programming language, language okay. and I started like a text interface. Mm -hmm. So it, it just printed out, you should do like this, okay. stop here, charge for this long, and so on. That took maybe a day or two, okay. just this first solution. Okay. But then, you know, I released it publicly after a few weeks. What was the reaction when people started finding it? People have always been quite po or extremely positive, I would say, and you know, applauding it and, and asking for features and, and pointing out when it doesn't do the right thing and so on. So nice. it's, been, it's been growing ever since, I would say, because I, I, mean, I do it mostly for my own sake. Mm -hmm. I do it because I need it. You need it. Mm -hmm. and, and whenever anyone says that you should have this as well, then yeah, maybe, I, yeah, that, that sounds fun. <laughs> Let's try that. Now tell me about the data that you're getting for your program. Are you able to get data from the cars? Yeah, that's the, I mean, that's the, the, the fine thing about Teslas. They're all connected. There's a feature which you don't have to use in the, in the program where you can log in with your Tesla account, and it will continuously fetch data for you, like your state of charge, where you are, how fast you're driving, and so on. And this fall, like six months ago or so, I, I started collecting that data. Really? As an opt-in program. Okay. So users can check, the, check a box and say, mm -hmm. you know, share my data. Mm -hmm. And I'll just store that, and, and that means that I can do some nice statistics as well on, you know, the consumption at certain speed, the temperatures, uh, charging rates, and all of that. So I'm getting quite a lot of data. What kind of features do your users seem to like the most that they can now get from your program? I think it is, I mean, mostly it is the, the, the basic idea of planning offline, planning at home ahead of time, and then following it up. And I think it's also, you know, the, uh, the, the Tesla Navigator as such has to do quite a few things automatically without asking you, estimating your current consumption and stuff like that. This one is more based on you enter your typical consumption, okay. as you think you will actually consume. Oh, oh so it's going to ask me, like, if I'm a lead, you know, a lead foot? Yeah, you will learn pretty soon how fa you know, how much you typically consume in your typical car. Right. Uh, and then it will just plan from there, and it will continuously follow up and show you, like, how much you consumed and how much you should have consumed uh, somehow, right? So, so that means that I, if I'm driving a long leg and, and I see that, you know, I'm 5% below the plan, then I can see pretty soon if I'm going to make it or not. So it gives people more uh, faith in getting where they want to get. Now, kind of a web newbie question. Mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm running this as a web-based program on my phone, mm -hmm. I can you know, plan my trip. And now when I get in my Tesla, mm -hmm. can I run it on the Tesla screen? Right. It's been designed all the time to be able to run on the Tesla screen. Oh. The Tesla browser, as most Tesla owners know, is pretty horrible. It's very slow. Although we just got an update exactly, today, yeah. it's faster. <laughs> yeah, it's getting faster. I haven't got uh, that update yet myself. It'll be very interesting to see how fast it gets. It's horribly slow in the in the browser, but it's kind of read-only mode. Okay. It's it's intended so that you can you can plan you can make your plan on your phone or, or your computer, and then you synchronize that oh. using an account. So that when log you log in, in at uh, in your Tesla browser, you'll get the same plan there. Gotcha. And then you just don't touch. Awesome. because it's so slow. Well, let me ask you this. We just, this is totally not scientific. It was only one data point, but we saw that it's about four times faster, maybe. Um, does that mean that your app would, well, run four times faster? I hope so, yeah. I mean, it's based quite a lot on Google Maps in the background, and okay. that's a lot of JavaScript and stuff like that that runs pretty slow on, on gotcha. the current browser. But I think that would be a lot faster. I hope so. So is the plan one day to get it so that I get into my car and I can pull up a trip that I've planned and then I can maybe change thing on the fly? Yeah, sure. And you can do that already, but you have to have quite a, quite wait, a lot of wait patience. A while. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> so you can definitely do that. Uh, and it's also, it actually has a, uh, like a, you know, 
test feature, beta feature, which is kind of real-time navigation. So it uses a different map set than Tesla does. And then it pulls uh, Google Street View images to kind of guide you oh. where you want to drive. Uh, it's still a very beta feature, and it's extremely slow. So it's not really usable yet. But I am hoping that it will be more useful now with the new browser. I'm getting really excited. I want to just go get in the car right now and try it, because <laughs> yeah, we, <go> we <laughs> just learned about your program yeah, the other day. Yeah. So we haven't got I did pull it up last night on the phone and yeah. checked it out, but I yeah. haven't checked out in the Tesla. No. This sounds really, really exciting. How can people support you? I mean, you're doing this as a hobby, but it's helping everyone out there. How can they help you? Right. I mean, right now, of course, you have the, the, you have the Tesla referral program. I have my link there, so people can use that. There's also donation buttons. Uh, I'm running this uh, partly in the cloud, so I need some donations to pay for the bills every every month. Donate, yeah. help him out. Yeah. He's working hard for you right now. <laughs> he he deserves it. Yeah, that uh, but that, it, that works out well. Uh, and otherwise, just just let me know if you like it. That's awesome. awesome. I'm I'm so excited to go try it now. Have you heard uh, any? of your users who said, like, you should go work for Tesla or you should, you know, work on this full time. Yeah, there, yeah, I, I hear that quite a lot. Uh, maybe this would not be the one, the, the stuff I would want to work at a Tesla, but it, it's still, it's, it's nice to get that feedback, definitely. Now, you're, so you've been a Tesla driver now for, what, year and a half? Yeah. Year and year. have you made some trips on your software? Every time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how has it worked out? Is it is it good? It's good. I find bugs, of course. That's I'm, I'm using it all the time, basically. I even when I just drive to the store. Your beta test. Yeah, yeah, of right. course, all the okay. time. But yeah, I've, I've done some long Europe trips, and, I, and it works really well. And it gives me the faith in in, in getting where I want on the, on the charge I have. I mean, a lot of things happen when you drive. It starts raining or snowing or whatever happens, and you start consuming a lot more than you plan for. And then it's really nice to, to feel secure that, yeah, I, I, can, I can follow this curve and see that I'll make it there anyway. Now, Jesse drives a Nissan Leaf. I'm sure he's sitting there going, I'll see his face. You can tell he's thinking, why can't I use his software for me? What would it take for you to be able to include other cars? Of course, I need, I need a few consumption numbers, how it charges, how, how much it consumes, and so on. Also, I need, uh, you know, to some extent, I would need kind of a user base that can kind of maintain this. Because I drive a Tesla, so it's easy for me to see when things go wrong, and I can listen to other Tesla owners telling me when things go wrong. If I wanted to support BMW and, and Nissan and all of that, then I would need some users to actually try to help me maintain it. Now, for Model 3, when that comes out to Europe, will that be something you'll add to your app? No, it's already there, of course. Oh, it's already on yeah, there. It's been there for a long time, oh, based cool. on speculation, basically. But then I'm refining the models based It'll on what people better, measure. Better. Yeah, 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 sure. So it's, I think it's pretty good now. There's a long-range model, which is then based on what people actually measure in their cars now. The short range for what's standard range, uh, it's just speculation, basically, right, right. based on the car, on the battery size. So uh, actually, the Rose 2020 is there as well, but and that's just you know complete speculation. Right. <laughs> Are you going to add the semi truck? Uh, no. no. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we could be your user base. Yeah, yeah. Maybe at some point. <laughs> we'll help you on the road trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll help you in the road trip. Uh, sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> Are you thinking about writing an app-based uh, program, or will it stay web-based? I mean, an app would be a lot better for a lot of users, and I'm receiving that request quite a lot. But I, I mean, I, I don't have the time to do it. You have to support both iOS and, and Android. It uh, takes a lot of time for one person to do it. Yeah. Otherwise, I have to, you know, either open up the, the API and support those guys doing it, or or you know hire someone to do it. And right now, I don't have a good way of doing that. So it's a web app for now. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much for talking to us and sharing this information about your app. I want everyone out there to go check out his app, um, give him some feedback, give him some love, because he's working hard, obviously, making our entire EV community better. Um, and I am dying to get back out to the Tesla and try it out. So Go see you ahead. guys later. Yeah. <laughs>
maybe you know, almost usable. That that looked very usable. Yeah, it looks pretty okay. We can see the, the highway being turned off here. Let's type in the destination here. Okay. Let's see uh, where we end up. Let's see if the keyboard is okay. Let's go to Stockholm. Oh, look at this. Oh, it already this, preloaded. This, this menu does not happen in the old browser. Really? Because this the, 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 the JavaScript doesn't execute. So oh. Nice, finally. Wow, that's a real helper <laughs> wow. right there, because then you can just start yeah, to yeah. type something. Exactly, you start typing something, yeah. and that's just like in the in, in your the browser at home. Uh, let's see, where did we go now? This seems just as fast as it was on my on my Android the other night. Right, right, um, and that's the intention that it should actually be usable here as well. But this is a lot better. That didn't take long I, at all. No, I need this. I need this update, obviously. So what you see mm -hmm. here now is like the plan to go here from Lund mm -hmm. in Sweden to to Stockholm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it wants you to stop at two superchargers. Mm -hmm. um, this one here will also show you the uh, kind of your your uh, state of charge profile as you drive. This is based on time, and then you have this line here showing you you're at ninety percent now. Mm -hmm. Assumed we're not logged in here, and then you go down to a certain percentage here before you see start charging. Oh, just to again. stop you, if I was logged in, it would know my state of charge. Definitely all oh. the time, and then as you drive, it will show you where you are and you will see your consumption curve compared to the plan. Wow. So it's quite easy to just eyeball and see if you're going to make this or not. That's fantastic. And then you, in the background here, you see the elevation change as well. It's not that, I mean, it, mm -hmm. it says 168 meters here, so it's not that easy to see, but you can kind of see if you're going uphill or downhill. Interesting. It's going to affect your consumption. And you take that into account? Absolutely. Wow. Definitely, definitely. And then you can, you can get a lot of geeky details here if you want to, or oh, not now. But as you drive, it will actually, if you're logged into, it will estimate your, your consumption uh, compared to the model, so if you, you know, if you have like roof racks or fancy rims or whatever, that will affect your consumption. So uh, you'll see that as well. We can guess it for you. Do you bit. know one of the most exciting buttons I see on this app? No. Nope. That one right there. Add waypoint. Yeah. Uh, the Tesla app cannot add a waypoint. Right. So, I mean, right. very commonly, you get into the car. You've got, you know, you want to go to grandma's house, but you also want to stop and pick up some flowers. Right. And you can't do that right so right. that's much appreciated and I see some crazy guys adding 25 waypoints <laughs> for their uh, you know, road trip around the US but it, it takes some time to plan but it works wow that's and, super and, and that's nice and there's actually another feature there if you uh, tap the ad oh, this is so much faster <laughs> it's gonna be uh, you know Gothenburg oh like this mm -hmm. uh, and then let's say that I am visiting someone there so that I can do some destination charging. Wow. So then I can, you know, this user interface can mm -hmm. improve a bit, but let's say I'll charge by, you know, 11 kilowatts for an hour. Okay. Um, let's see if I can type colon here, here. Like this. Okay. Um, and then I will just plan including that. So it will optimize everything, all the degrees of freedom that is that's still left there, and then it will say that, you know, I, know, I know you're going to charge for that. Phenomenal. Hour. Yeah, that's, uh, that helps helps a lot, actually. That really does help, yeah? because there's a lot of cases where you know you can get a little charge while you're mm -hmm. watching a movie right. or something like that, but right. you don't know how to account for that. Right. right? You don't right. know what that means. And that, wow. So that, that works fine. You see here that it's going to charge here in Gothenburg. It's not an official supercharger. It doesn't know about the charger at all. You're telling it you're going to charge there. And uh, it will take an hour. It's you know it's kind of uh, not accounted for in the total here because it's something you do anyway, not waiting for it like having lunch or whatever it right. is. What it does here is to you can see in the background there's some alternative routes here as well, oh. and I'm pretty happy with that functionality. It, it it quite often shows you alternative routes that are nice, that are actually good options. It will show you anything within you know the first three routes that are within 10% of the the optimal value the, the total time. That's a fantastic feature because so there's plenty actually, of times where you're like, oh, it really would be nice to stop by the lake, but yeah. you know, is that? Yeah. That's fantastic. So uh, it will get, and quite often, you know, I, I tested quite a lot through, you know, virtual trips to Europe and so on, and quite often you can take pretty different routes and end up within 10 minutes of the total trip right, time, right. you know, within 25, 25 right. hours or something like that. Uh, but you go completely different routes, and they have different, you know, properties, of course. So I, I think it's good to present them to you. I, I wouldn't have heard about your app if it weren't for Dulbjorn, mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. I, I have to admit it, being an American, we tend to not go out of our little nope. world, yeah. you know? And so it's like, you know, oh, what are those Swedes talking about? I don't know. Uh, but I'm really excited. I really want to share this. This is not just a Swedish thing. You can use it anywhere the Teslas drive. Absolutely. Anywhere there's superchargers. Absolutely. Anywhere it, it there's chargers, the basically. World. Yeah. Actually, I just added China and Japan as well. Oh, my goodness. Those guys are not too keen on using English uh, right. services. But anyhow, it's there. You it's can there. plan your, your virtual trips, at right. least. And that's, that's fun. That's fantastic. I mean, part, part of the fun here is that you can, uh, you can plan a dream. Basically, you can just, you know, what if I drove from, right. you know, 
Washington to whatever. And then that's a lot of fun just doing that. That's fantastic. Yeah. I cannot wait to go and try this. I can't wait to go support you. So thank you for doing this. No problem really at all. appreciate it. We have this little fun button here showing how many routes have been planned so far. And I wow, had one, I love it. I had a million routes, uh, you know. Congratulations. That's <laughs> celebration. You, you've the helped over a million yeah, yeah. people take trips. Like, that's fantastic.